Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Merrick's Garage. Before we jump into it, I want to throw a quick plug in for my video I just put up last week, which was 100 videos in 5 minutes. I reached the 100 video mark, I'm right about at the million views, and that's because of you guys. So I wanted to say thank you, there's a little extra video I want to put together, and I've also got a giveaway coming up in the next couple weeks that I think you guys are going to dig. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Make sure you're following me over on Instagram because I'm posting details over there too. Hit me up in the comments down below if you don't have Instagram. We can keep in touch that way. But uh, yeah, a lot of cool stuff happening. I've been super busy on the truck. We got a lot of stuff done. I'm not going to waste your time with any more. We're going to get straight to it. Merrick's Garage. You know, I've heard horror stories about replacing the yoke. So I'm going in prepared for a battle. So let's see how this goes. I gotta go remove the nut to begin with. It is a one and five sixteenths size nut, which is really large. And I think it's about 200 foot pounds. So that's gonna be the challenge right there. Let's go. Still keep my air tools around for when I really need some legit torque. This is going way too easy. See, I've got my new forged yoke. My main reason for going with the Yukon Forge Joke was not necessarily to get the U-bolts, although that is a huge benefit. You can always drill out your old yoke and run U-bolts instead of straps. I wanted to make this 1350 U-joint my fusible link in my entire front end. Drive shaft to U-joint, CV down to the ring and pinion, to the locker, to the axle shafts, to the 1440 U-joints I've got at the axles out to the locking hubs. This will be the easiest to replace, the cheapest to replace, and most likely what's going to fail. Going to a forged joke pretty much guarantees that this is my weak link, which is exactly how it should be. This is why I dislike these. They just, they strip. So here's the new yoke. I've got the inner and outer seals. I've got the cap, got the nut, got my U-bolts. I hit it with a light coating of ultra black. Now to hit it so it goes in straight, my lock nut tool. Those of you on my channel who've been around long enough have probably seen me breaking all those drive shafts. So let's just take a quick look at what I did to solve this problem. Big uh, universal up top, or constant velocity, and then down low, 
I swapped to putting the splines on the yoke instead of the main shaft. So I've got a splined yoke down here. Look at that. Now, I'm not expecting to get that much droop, but what this does is it just gives me tons and tons of surface area to reduce uh, torque shear. Pretty cool. I got it at full droop. It's not, uh, it's not beautiful, but man, I kind of feel it is. So this is gonna be full droop. And uh, the great thing is, so that's the most extension my uh, drive shaft's gonna see. But if you look up here, you see that right there? Right there, daylight. That's daylight between my constant velocity and my skid plate. Or my okay team, what do you think? right there and it's pretty savage uh, I think we can do some work on that a little shredding you know that sounds good what do you think mr. tape measure dude I love tape measure okay yeah, and that's cool. the sort of help I'm working with no wonder it's taking so long it's got a tight quarters down in here Okay, so measuring our toe, we're going to take the differential between the measurement front and rear, basically the tape 180 degrees apart from each other. It's, it's important that you get this line between the two parallel when you do the front and the rear, otherwise it can skew your readings up to a, quite a bit. Sixty-eight and a half inches up front, sixty-eight and seven eighths in the back. So that is a quarter inch difference. I'll take that. Uh, I can drive it and see how it feels and how it handles, but I'm happy with that. Starting to get the cross member mocked up. Not sure if this is going to be permanent or temporary, but I had to do a relief cut for the exhaust, and this is just an example of how bitchin' this saw is. Now, I wish I had a better way of cutting this, but you know, you work with what you got. I got the cross member mostly done. You guys want to see it? Let's go underneath the truck. There we go. A little bit of relief cut for the exhaust. <sighs> Still needs some work. But it's coming together. Here is the cross member starting to take shape. I uh, still need to do some work on it, obviously. Um, but it's starting to come together. And this will be the forward structure. And I think what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to tie these plates in with the links mounts yeah i gotta box this little cutaway first but uh yeah progress see i got about an inch left on my shock and i probably two inches into my bump still have quite a ways i can go whether I need to or not. And you can see that bend in the pan hard made all the difference in the world. Notching tube is an art form, an art form that I haven't always been very good at. I'm not very good at it still, but I am getting better. And I feel like I've found a system that takes some of the guesswork out of it and calculates some of the angles that you need. There's a program online that I will link down to below that basically you put in the diameter tubing you put in the angle you're trying to achieve, you put in the inside diameter thickness, and it spits out a piece of paper 
that you roll up and then it gives you the relief cuts as to what you're going to cut with your saw. When you think of a piece of tubing, when you have a piece of tubing and you make a straight cut through it, by nature of the curve, you're gonna end up with a scallop. It's just learning what sort of angle you need for what sort of diameter and what sort of fitment you're looking for. So I've gone ahead and marked these on here. This is for the brace that I'm hoping to put between the shock hoops in front of the motor to stiffen it up some more. I'm gonna go ahead and notch this and let's see how it fits. beginning of the cross member that's going to hold up the transmission. It's going to sit this way with this being the driver's side. Here's the cutout I've made for the exhaust run through and this is going to be the actual support. This is going to go right here hopefully. You can see that I transposed these two onto here and have cut this. So when it's on hopefully This will be able to be fixed right back down. But yeah, I'm excited with how this has come out. Got these nuts on the outside. This is what's gonna bolt it onto the frame and hopefully stiff enough to be the middle of the frame where the, uh, the links mount. with how this has turned out. I'm actually pretty surprised that it's come out as cleanly as it has. I don't have a bolt long enough to get all the way through. Well, this one does, but that's not gonna work. So I need to go pick up uh, some 3816s to get through and tie that down. And uh, yeah, you can see my, my clearance is, is where it needs to be. And the bolts over on the frame, those are the bolts right there. They're tying this into the frame. And also it rests on it's resting on top of the frame as opposed to underneath. So maybe that can give you a little better shot. You can see there that we're on top of the frame. And then this also is gonna give me my platform to, uh, to build off of for the rest of the skid plate. I'm actually pretty stoked that it came out looking as good as it did. This is one of the first pieces that I've really fabbed up from scratch. And it works, it fits. Let's just hope it doesn't fall apart. I've picked up a couple of these Lytra little uh, LEDs. They are phenomenal. Super bright, great white light, and check it out, they all fit in the GoPro session stuff. Just really handy for little stuff like this. It's big boy day today. We are going to be, well, I say we, but it's going to be Elijah from Nocturnal Welding is going to burn in all the hardcore stuff and all the little stuff that's tricky that I just don't trust myself with. So he brought his welder over. Like I mentioned in past videos, I've only got 110 right now. And while that's fine for a lot of this stuff, I really, really want to make sure that I'm getting awesome penetration when I'm especially mounting the brackets, welding the brackets for the links onto the frame, doing the pan hard, all that stuff. So he brought his welder over. This guy knows what he's doing when it comes to welding, so I'm going to hand it over to him. And uh, I'm going to start doing frame prep and getting all the, the welding spots ready. But it's a big day today. Point of no return.
you guys remember if uh, if you think back a couple videos back I had to move my box so I could get the pan hard bracket in so it would clear the frame I mean clear the diff down there that that's just created a lot more work than I needed so I went to a I think this is a two and a half inch drop instead of a four inch drop Pittman arm box is back in its stock location the only thing I had to do was clearance this top reservoir, this top cap up here a little bit uh, to clearance this uh, shock hoop. And we just tacked the pan hard bracket in place. I'm gonna cycle the suspension right now to see if we're gonna hit. I'm, I'm guessing it's gonna be pretty close. Uh, but we're gonna put a bend in the pan hard bar here in a little bit, but I am, I'm really happy to be keeping the box in the factory location. The cross member is here. The shock hoop is here. I've got the ORD frame bracket. I've got the ORD uh, reinforcement kit on there. If it's gonna go anywhere, this is the place you want it for rigidity and strength. So the fact that it fits right now is good. And look at this clearance. This is... <laughs> yeah, that is millimeters. But I'll take millimeters what she said okay let's cycle this thing now obviously the pan hard isn't in and so the axle is shifting driver side uh, we're gonna lower it back down throw the pan hard on and see what happens but so far yeah we don't have any interference the only thing I'm worried about a little bit is the springs but I think we're gonna be okay. We're gonna have to throw just a very, well. Dude, it needs a pin. Yeah, we're gonna, throw, we're gonna raise the other side too. Let's throw a spring on. Yeah, so. Okay. All right. Okay, we got the spring on. This is the moment of truth here. I think we're gonna be good. Yeah, that's it, until we hit the bar. <coughs> yeah, we're good. So do you guys remember in earlier videos when I talked about everything coming together at the same point? Well, this is exactly what I was talking about. So you can see my steering heim really close to hitting the pan hard bracket. The shock really close to hitting the pan hard bracket. And I, I'm not sure if this is in purposeful design, but this clearance just seems too good to be coincidental. I have to hand it to off-road design. Look at that. As it transitions down, I have to believe they did that on purpose. That's pretty bitchin'. And uh, yeah, coming up on the strike pad. Right on, right on, let's burn this baby in. So we're getting close on a lot of the clearances and everything's starting to move pretty well. I'm getting fired up on how things are looking. It's just fine tuning at this point. So I'm shaving down uh, threads on bolts. So I'm shaving down bolt heads. Lots of little stuff just to make a little bit more clearance. I put that bend into the bar, seven degree bend, gave me about an inch and only shortened up the overall length by about one or two millimeters, which is awesome. Tons of clearance. Um, at full bump, it looks like my bolt for my pitman arm might hit the pan hard, so I'm gonna shave that down. The pan hard weld is hitting a little bit and I'm shaving all that down. So I'll show you right now what I got. So, 
believe it or not, at full bump, when this guy is, if the wheels are straight, we're gonna see these two contacting, and also this guy right here interferes in this. So, shave that down, clean it up. Progress is being made. So where does that leave us? Well, there's still quite a bit of work to do. What my next step is, is to finish all the welds on all the structural pieces that I've done. Everything's either tacked in place or welded up completely, but I do have some stuff that I've got to run a weld all the way around. And then I'm gonna to need to reinforce uh, just key parts. There's about three, four plates on the frame that I wanna make sure are reinforced with that uh, perpendicular plate. And then, we move on to the electrical component, which is putting all the wiring back in place. I'm gonna move my transmission cooler and my power steering cooler to the front, right below the radiator, to get them out of the way on the fender wells. Um, and then, build the core support, get the radiator back on, and little things like that. So, we're really close here. It's been a lot of work, but I'm really starting to get stoked on how it's coming together, and everything's kind of falling into place. So make sure you stay tuned. I got more stuff coming. It's gonna get epic and then we're gonna road trip and go whale on this thing. Merrick's Garage, thanks for watching.